New Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario 64 DS are two Nintendo DS games that have some amazing minigames. And in my last video, I wrote a Python program to automatically play a minigame called Wanted. You guys liked it, and because of democracy, I'm going to be automating more minigames in this video. So let's get started. The first minigame I'm going to be automating is called Sort or Splode. It is a simple sorting minigame with bombs, and there are two colors, red and black. The gimmick is that the bombs explode if they aren't sorted quick enough, meaning that speed is key, especially later on when it seems almost impossible to keep up, which is perfect for the program to play. Since the program I'm going to be writing needs to be able to recognize the bombs, I quickly ripped some assets from the game and began writing the code to load in the images and to try to recognize the bombs. The way the program is able to locate anything at all is that it takes a screenshot of the game every few frames and then uses a function called locate in PyAutoGUI, an image recognition library, to try to find the bounding box of the first bomb it could find. So let's see if it works. So now that we know where the bombs are located, we need to drag the bombs into the goals. This is actually pretty straightforward. All it involves is moving the mouse to the position of the bomb, and then using a function to drag the mouse to the goal corresponding to its color. So let's try it. Well it does work, but it's a little slow. So let's turn down the time it takes for each drag. Nope. Here is the issue. Once the duration of each drag is under 16 milliseconds, then the dragging is too fast for the game to process it. So we need a new idea. And that's when I realized something. When the mouse is dragged, it isn't a continuous movement. In fact, it just moves the mouse a certain distance instantly. So what's stopping me from just moving the mouse over the bomb, grabbing it, and then immediately moving it to the goal? Let's try it. It seems once the bombs start to overlap, the mouse can sometimes grab the wrong bomb by accident. So I added some code to make sure the bombs actually make their way out of the spawn before getting moved. So how many bombs do you think the program can now sort? A hundred? Five hundred? Maybe even a thousand? Well, let's find out the answer.
I was honestly hoping it would make it to 9,999, but 3,100 is good enough for me. Continuing the theme of bomb bombs, we move into the next minigame, Bomb Bomb Squad. In this minigame, hordes of parabombs drop from the sky and try to destroy a bed of flowers. So the goal is to use this giant slingshot to shoot cannonballs at the bombs before they destroy the flowers. To start like before, I wrote some basic code to load in some textures, but this time it loads in different angles of the bombs. Because as they move through the air, they turn in different directions. Then, in the code for locating the bombs, I use a function called locateAll that generates a list of all the visible bombs on screen. And it works! Now that we can locate all of the bombs on screen, we have to select one of them to be shot at. So I added a loop that finds whichever bomb is currently lowest on the screen to target. We need some way of calculating where the cannonball needs to be pulled in order to line up with the target bomb. If we draw a vector from the cannonball to the target bomb, we can then calculate the components by subtracting the bomb's position from the cannonball's position. Then using inverse tangent, we could find the angle of this vector and flip its direction around by adding 180 degrees, or pi radians. Then, at the end, we recalculate the components of the new vector using cosine and sine, and then move the mouse to this new location. And BAM! It works. The only problem that really arises is that when the bomb is really low on the screen, it isn't good for the slingshot to aim towards the ground, as it is unlikely to hit any other bombs as it moves by. So I added a little if statement to retain the original angle of the bomb if it is lower than the cannonball. So let's see how our script can do. You know, it didn't do perfect, but I'd still call that a success. The next and final minigame I will be automating is called Memory Master. This minigame is a much more difficult version of Memory Match, a minigame where you must pair cards together that are the same by flipping them over. In this harder version, however, there are 16 cards at the beginning, instead of 8, making it nearly impossible to complete without outside interference. To start this script, I load in all the different cards, and then locate them and add them to a list to keep track of them. Each card is assigned a different value, 
and blank cards that are currently unknown have a value of zero. So as the program runs, the values of the cards only change if a card that is located has a higher value than the previous. This allows the program to remember what each card's value is, even after it is no longer visible to the viewer. Then all that needs to be done is to make it so that the mouse clicks on the cards that pair together, and then when no match is found, for it to click on the cards that still have an unknown value to complete the search. So let's see how it does. Dang it, it's stuck. At least it got past 100 levels, but I'm kind of confused what caused this to happen. Thank you guys for sticking to the end of this video. I had fun working on the scripts for these minigames, and if you would like to check them out, they're on my GitHub linked down below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and for your support as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye